Hey everyone, what's up? I'm Brent from Elite Gaming Computers and today we're gonna take a look at EVGA's entry into the world of liquid cooling. Now, when EVGA first dropped these coolers, they originally came out with just a 280 millimeter version and a 120 millimeter version. But since they have also added a 240 millimeter cooler to the mix. So there are quite a few options to choose from. Now, if you've already been out there and, che and checking out reviews on these coolers, then you probably already know these are some of the best AIO liquid coolers currently available. I am going to unbox them in just a moment, and then I'm going to test them out just to give you an additional review to go off of when you're ready to make your purchase. I'm also, at the end of this video, going to go over who these coolers will work for. And by that, I mean if you're looking to build a new gaming computer and you have a specific budget set for how much you want to spend, we're gonna see whether or not these coolers make sense for your budget. So for instance, if you have, a, let's say $800 to spend on your parts, would these coolers make sense for you? In my opinion, probably not at that price range, but we will take a look at what price ranges these will make sense in, all right? Now that that's out of the way, let's get these things unboxed and let's take a look at how they perform. EVGA's closed loop coolers are based on the latest generation Asetek pump design which is also what is used in EVGA's two main competitors in this space, the NZXT Kraken X62 and the Corsair H115i. However, EVGA's units are a bit different. They do sport Teflon nano bearing fans as well as come with a completely unique fan design in itself. The CPU block also has a bit different of a shape than its competitors. The coolers currently come in at $129 for the 280mm version, $109 for the 240mm version, and $80 for the 120mm version. They're all available on Amazon and you can find a link in the description to each one below. These coolers are compatible with any mainstream CPU socket currently available. And while these coolers didn't originally come with support for AMD's AM4 socket right out of the box, I can confirm that they do now come with AM4 brackets. So you can definitely use these coolers on a new AMD Ryzen build. The radiators on these coolers are made out of aluminum and the CPU block is made out of copper. The top plate on the CPU block also has EVGA's logo on it and it is RGB friendly. And if you have an EVGA graphics card, you can sync the two's RGB lights to match each other. And while the braided tubing is pretty standard on coolers in this price range, they do contribute to what is, in my opinion, an overall very nice looking liquid cooler. The coolers all come with thermal paste pre-applied, but if you were to have to reinstall the block for any reasons, you would need to get some thermal paste for the reinstallation. Now before we take a look at who should use these coolers and what kinds of budgets they will work well in, I first wanted to give you a look at the results we got when we put these coolers to the test. Now to test these coolers out, we installed them in our test system, obviously, and we ran our system at idle and full load across a given period of time. We also stressed our CPU with Prime95 to get it at that 100% utilization. Now the results of our tests will be listed as the average temperature across all of our processors' cores over the ambient temperature that the system was tested in. Now I'll be the first to admit that our testing methodology isn't perfect, and it's definitely something I want to improve on in the future. And the other problem is that I didn't have EVGA's competitors to compare them against. And so unfortunately, this benchmark is only going to show how these three stack up against each other. But I'm hoping that the results of this benchmark will at least give you a better idea on the price to performance that these offer. And hopefully it will give you uh, some more information to work off and will help you make a more informed decision when it does come time for you to buy a closed loop cooler or any cooler for that matter. With that being said, let's take a look at the results and see if there's something you can pull from them to help you out. Rather than changing the fan speeds in our BIOS, we simply stuck to using EVGA's flow control software, which has a slider that allows you to easily adjust the cooler's fan speed. So we tested each cooler running at the maximum fan speed, the medium fan speed, and the lowest fan speed. One important thing that I'd like to note is that while you will probably initially want to look at the results at the top fan speeds, the reality is that most people will never want to run these coolers at maximum fan speed simply because the sound levels are too high. In fact, even at the cooler's medium fan settings, the sound is probably higher than most people will want to deal with. So it's probably almost silly of me to even include these numbers, but I figured I ran the tests, so I might as well throw them in just to give a full picture of what these coolers can do. 
Now, EVGA software's fan speed slider do allow you to move in small increments between the lowest and medium fan speeds, and so you can use that to find the happy middle ground between cooling performance and sound level. If you're wondering what these coolers sound like at the higher speeds, here's a clip of the 280mm cooler running at the different speeds so you can get a better idea of what it sounds like. Obviously, the sound level at the highest fan speed is not ideal, and it isn't much more tolerable at the medium settings. However, at the lower fan speeds, the cooling performance was more than adequate, and as I mentioned before, you could bump the fan speeds up a bit more without them getting too loud, and you can get a little bit better performance that way. Now, I am seeing a bit of discrepancy between my results and some of the results found in other reviews. And as I mentioned above, my testing methodology could use improvement, and so it would be dishonest of me to portray my results as being the most accurate. So in terms of cooling performance, I would say to check multiple reviews and benchmarks, and of those, namely the review that Gamers Nexus did on these coolers, because that will give you a better overall picture of how these coolers are going to perform for you. I'm not really the biggest proponent of closed loop coolers from a value perspective because most decent air coolers and heat sinks will offer better price to performance ratio than AIO coolers will. Now, however, uh, in my opinion, closed loop coolers do look a lot nicer than air coolers. And in this case specifically, EVGA's coolers are very attractive. That's just my opinion. Now, these coolers will perform at a high level. It's just that you're going to pay quite a bit more to get a small return in terms of performance. But that's just kind of the game you play when you're talking about spending a lot of money on a new PC build or upgrade, because as you look at the more expensive and high-end side of uh, PC components, you're going to hit a point where the, the performance gain doesn't scale evenly with the price increase uh, of the components. But overall, uh, EVGA's coolers perform very well. They're very quiet at lower fan speeds, and in my opinion, they look really nice. And among the competition, they're probably one of the best options currently available. Now, the question is, should you get one of these coolers? Um, before, uh, before we get into that answer, I wanna give you a few more things to consider. Uh, now, let's just say, for instance, that you are dead set on getting one of these coolers uh, to put inside of your PC build. In my opinion, I think that there are probably three questions you need to ask yourself before you can really commit to saying uh, you wanna get one of these coolers. And those questions are, first, what is the total budget of your build? Or in other words, how much do you wanna spend on parts for your system? Second, are you willing to sacrifice system performance for the aesthetics and minimal performance gain that closed loop coolers offer? And finally, third, what case are you going to choose for your build? Now, in my opinion, if your budget uh, to build your PC is lower than $1,000, I don't think any of these coolers make sense for your build, at least not right now, because of course you could always upgrade to one later. And the reason for this is that if you drop 90 to $130 on one of these coolers, you're going to cut a significant portion out of your budget, which is going to leave you with uh, less to spend on more important components like your processor and your graphics card. Now, even at $1,000 to $1,200 for your budget, I don't think that by putting one of these coolers in your system, um, you're going to get as much performance as you could and you're going to have to sacrifice somewhere. Now, if you don't mind sacrificing some overall system performance to get one of these coolers because you like the way they look, you can definitely do so. Now, this is your build and there's nothing stopping you from doing what you want. But if you are strictly performance oriented, you probably won't want to consider these coolers unless you have a budget of about $1,300 to $1,500 or higher. 
That's my opinion. Uh, now, finally, let's just say you have the budget to accommodate one of these coolers and you are dead set on getting an EVGA cooler. Now, the next question you need to ask yourself is whether or not the case you are looking at choosing for your build can accommodate a 280 millimeter radiator. If it can, then you can get any of these three options here. If it can accommodate, uh, if it cannot accommodate a 280 millimeter radiator, and there are quite a few cases out there that can't, then you will have to look at the 240 millimeter or 120 millimeter option. Now, these are just some general points that I think will help uh, you better determine whether or not one of these coolers is right for you. But if you do want to see what these coolers uh, look like in actual builds, there are a few links in the description below that will take you to full part lists that contain these coolers. Definitely check those out if you want some ideas for your build or if you just want a template to work off of. Um, and if these coolers aren't for you or you just want to check out some other options so that you have a broader knowledge of kind of the better options out there, be sure to check out our CPU coolers guide on EliteGamingComputers.com. There is a link in the description below to that as well. All right, that wraps up this review. Please like the video if you found it helpful, comment with questions or feedback, and subscribe to our channel for future videos. We do have a big giveaway coming up, and if you are subscribed to our channel, you will not miss out on the announcement of it. So definitely subscribe, or at least check our website or social media pages at some point over the next few days if you want a chance to enter to win. All right, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.